Hello, welcome to episode 36 of How to Play Like a Wop Pro. Today I'm going to show you another game in the 907 during my session with full APCR to 99% marks. Uh, we're on Stu's Yankee, West Spawn, Tier 8 matchmaking, which is very good. Um, this thing has way more armor in tier 8, and plus, since I'm using full APCR, it's just way easier to pen people. Immediately, um, I'm spamming K5. I'm telling my team, please take the dip with me. Um, if you notice who I invite to my platoon in the dynam dynamic platoon, I invite medium tanks in the ELC. Um, I couldn't form a platoon with these people because their platoon invites were off. Um... And the decision whether or not to take the dip in a medium tank or not is a tricky one. Um, there are times where I'm in a medium tank, especially something like a leopard, where I'll just play here the whole game and snipe the south. But there are times when I do take the dip, and I think it's very beneficial to do so in some situations. So what are the variables um, that you need to... Need to um, Analyze. So, first of all, are you top tier? If you're top tier um, and you're a good player, you're way more likely to win the fight in the ditch if you're a top tier tank because you're just fighting easier opponents. Second of all, does your tank have good DPM and good HP? So if you have good DPM and or HP, <laughs> then it's easier to win a brawl. So a leopard has bad HP and bad um, well, it's DPM is good, but it's armor is bad. I guess I should have mentioned that to you. It also matters how much armor you have. Um, but yeah, a 907 is way better for taking the dish than a Leo is because armor, DPM, and, um, more HP. So in this game, I took my improved aiming unit loadout. Which might surprise you, because if I'm planning to go into the ditch, then you would think I might want to bring HP. But you have to realize that not only do you have to win the ditch, but the whole point of winning the ditch in the first place, for damage-wise anyway, is not the initial damage you get in the ditch. The whole point is, after you kill the ditch, you can go to this position here, or you can go to this position here. From here, you can spot everybody on the corner here. And your teammates, if they if they poke up here, anywhere in this area, or if they're behind you over here, they shoot the corner, and you get a good amount of um, assisting damage. Um, so that's 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 uh, this position. Um, but this position, from here, you can't spot the corner. But if you have a teammate who's spotting the corner, or if these guys on the far corner are getting lit by guys over here, then you'll have side shots. Um, and so that's why I'm bringing the improved aiming unit so that I can snipe better. Um, another interesting thing that I did in this game is I didn't go directly in this way. I went to this building first. And the reason I went to this building, I don't really do this regular, regularly or anything. But I wanted to come here so that I could see what comes into the ditch. And then I can also shoot them as they come in without risking taking damage in return. Because they can't really shoot me back. Um, only the guys in the open here would be able to shoot me. Nobody behind. Um, and so then if if too many people commit into the ditch, then I can always just cancel and stay at this building. And I won't die. But I noticed that uh, Samu gets lit in the open, so I go for a free shot on him. Now we've won the ditch, so... Pretty soon here I'm going to go down into the ditch, and I'll show you how how this um, position works, how you get side shots. This is probably going to be pretty boring for like the next four minutes, I'm just warning you, like it's literally just me sniping people. There's probably not going to be much I can really commentate on to be honest. It's just me shooting, sitting ducks. Here's the position I was talking about. 
most people probably know about it, but if you don't know about it, it's hugely beneficial to know about it. Because it makes this map so much better. Debating whether I should speed this up or not. I guess I won't for now, but maybe we will later. Also, I get pretty lucky with my accuracy this game. Like, I hit the low cupola probably four times, and the E4 cupola probably like four times as well. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. This guy blinds me, but he's firing HE, so it doesn't really matter. And I have to be careful with my shells here because this thing does not have many shells. If you miss like 60% um, of your shots, you're not even going to have like a 6k damage game. You're not going to have enough shells for it. So it's always a, I'm always thinking, should I take the shot or should I not? Because if I just spam shots at low probability targets, then I'm going to run out of ammo. Here I shoot down the house, but to be honest, even if I do shoot down this house, it's not going to let my teammates shoot them any better. They already have an angle. It's only going to make me shoot better, and even if I have a shot on him, I'm not going to take it because then I'll get lit and then all these guys in the corner will just shoot me. So, there's just probably no point to shooting down the house there. Now just imagine if I didn't have the improved aiming unit on right now. Just imagine how much lower my damage would be. I probably would have missed like probably four more four more shots of damage or something. There's also a angle through here if you didn't know about it. Um, but it only works if they back off from the church. If they're just sitting behind the church then you can't shoot them. Here I'm looking for some spots on their TDs. If you look, they still have three unlit TDs, so I was just hoping one of them might have been sticking out of a bush or something. And when you play this position, obviously you do not want to be sitting right here shooting. You want to be behind the house so that no one on the ridge spots you. So right now I see that we're up 2,000 HP. I see that we're about to push through the north. And I'm thinking about getting involved because my shots on their capolas are getting worse and worse as they realize that they can't over poke or else I'll bleed them. So there's not too much point to sitting there and trying to snipe at them for like four more minutes while my team kills the rest of them off. I need to get in the fight. I still have basically full HP. That was a bad shot. So my plan right now... Um, these guys in the south are slowly dying. I'm hoping to either get shots on the guys in the south... Or to make my way to this corner and just start trading my HP with these guys. But obviously, these guys in the south will be shooting me the whole time. Um, maybe not the 430U, but the Sent AX would. So ideally, I want to kill these guys before I go to the corner. And if you'll notice, I'm literally just sitting in the, in the open field. Like, I don't really care if I take shots. And this is a good habit to get into if, if what you're going for is either combined damage or average damage per game. If you have HP at the end, just go in the open and, like, take a shot. Just guarantee that your shots will hit. Don't play it risky. At the end of the game, and you, if you have all your HP, there's literally no reason 
why you shouldn't just drive right in the open, right in front of the enemies, and make sure your shots pen instead of taking chancy shots so that you can remain in cover. So like right now, I could have dove in this ditch to make sure I get safe from the Leo because you know, if he hits me, it's 420 damage and I shoot him for 150, that's a bad trade. But the thing is, at this point in the game, I don't care if I get a bad trade. I'm going for any trade at all because the game is over. I didn't actually realize, but apparently you can overmatch a SGRV-1 with a 100mm gun. I thought it was um, 120 millimeters it had to be greater than, but I guess you just have to have more than 90 millimeters. Or 90, uh, your caliber needs to be higher than 90 millimeters. And I was going for um, combined because I'm trying to mark this thing right. So I go for a track shot. You could argue that I should not go for a track shot, and I think that would actually be true. I shouldn't go for a track shot here because I already had, I think, 500 assisting damage from spotting. So if I shoot him in the track, he's going to go down to like 800 or 500 health, and then I'm just going to get the tracking instead of getting potential spotting damage from these guys. So that was stupid of me to go for the track, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, let me quickly show you the post-game stats in case you're curious. So I didn't hit, it, hit any blinds. 8,000 damage, 800 spotting, 1,100 base XP because I was sniping for a lot of my damage. And um, overall I make 10k credits. Even firing um, no gold at all, I really wasn't making many credits. Um, playing the 907 with full APCR because I was paying for large consumables so I was pretty much breaking even most games and then I would get like 10 or 15,000 each game into my credit reserve thing that goes up to 750,000 so I was basically only making like 10 to 15,000 a game even though I shot no gold but yeah um, hopefully you learned a little bit more about how to play this map. I'm not saying you should take the dip every time, obviously. Um, just be smart about it. If your team's not going with you, don't go. If you're not in a tank that's good for it, don't go. If you see too many enemies commit, don't go. Basically comes down to that. So yeah, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. There'll probably be another video tomorrow. Goodbye.